We are guaranteed one thing here. We are guaranteed a fifth different winner at Top Fuel to start the season. The last time that was an occurrence was 2015. And Tony, which car to you stands out in this matchup? Well, the intrigue for me is how quick the tuner for Brittany Force feels that he can run. Uh, when you size up Antron Brown, it's not a given. You can you can get out of the gate ahead of him. It's just not easy to do. So Brittany Force is coming into this matchup with the better car. There's no question about that. She gives up two to three hundred on the starting line on average. She had a great reaction time in the semifinal. Hopefully that doesn't uh, uh, distract her. If she can do that again and show Antron a nose off the starting line, that's great. But that both of that plays into this final round, not just what the driver is capable of doing, but how the tuner and the confidence the tuner has in their driver. And for the tuners of Antron Brown, they know that he can give them a little bit on the starting line. 21 years ago, David Grubnick made his first final round appearance as a driver at this race. Seattle last year was the last time a DSR top fuel dragster won an NHRA national event, and both drivers leave. He's Antron good. Brown hits in the tires, and you saw the cylinder go out, but it is going to be Brittany Forrest. 3.749 seconds at 302 miles per hour. A John Forrest Racing double up here in Houston, Texas, as Antron Brown left the starting line within two thousandths of Brittany. She was out first. He was on a very strong run, but the car spun the tires, and it's the first win of the Brittany Forrest David Grubnick era. It is the ninth career victory in top fuel for Brittany Forrest. Tony, you and I share an enthusiasm for boxing, boxing history. You're an active boxer at one point. I'm just a guy who's too afraid to get in the ring. But these type of matchups, to me, you're looking at an Ali Frazier type of thing. Two guys that are big swingers, two guys that can get the job done, and they match up a lot. Well, and drivers pay attention to what the other drivers do. They may tell you they don't. They all say, well, we're going to race the track, we're going to race the lane. But make no mistake about it, these drivers have sized one another up, as have the tuners. So they're looking at the numbers. You see Jimmy Proc making the last second adjustment on the idle. He wants that idle to be exactly at 2,500 RPM if that's what his target is. So they know what one another has to do. Now coming into this race, it was Matt Hagen that lost traction. So Dickie Venables has more adjustments to make in the way of the clutch, but uh, we still have some temperature on the racetrack. It's still a very pleasant spring day, but there is heat that this rubber and the pavement track is absorbed. An incredible indicator of Matt Hagen's talent. He is buried only three thousandths of a second in his reaction times all day long. They're both pre-stage. It's the final round of Nitro Funny Car in Houston. Both drivers working on the steering wheel, and it's going to be Robert Hyde. 3.941 seconds, 310 miles an hour. The car that qualified in the third session that looked lost in the woods through the first through two sessions has curved on the wind light in the final round here at the Spring Nationals. Unbelievable work down there for Robert Hyde and Jimmy Pro.